Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lonewood Forest Homeschool. I'm Andrea. This is Meglin. And we are on our 14 acres in the Boreal Forest in Northern Ontario. Welcome. <laughs> it is snowing today. It is a proper snow globe kind of day. So today is question and answer day. Yes, every Wednesday I try to answer a typical homeschool question. Please leave any of your questions down below and so I can answer them next week. But this week we are answering how do you start forest homeschool or how do you do a forest school at your house or yeah, tell us about forest homeschool. <laughs> so I'll be talking about all that and more today. So let's go have some fun. What are you making, Evelyn? A cake. <gasps> a cake. Oh, how lovely. Are you making another bird seed cake? <laughs> or just making a different cake? A uh, bird seed yeah. cake, but tiny. <laughs> and the person who went first It's for the bird to eat. So this is using snow. And so bird seeds will probably give the birds some water. Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously it's snowing quite a bit today. Our sun is gone, which is sad. I love when it's beautiful and sunny, although the snow is quite fun as well. <laughs> it is zero degrees Celsius today, and so it's just supposed to get warmer and warmer, and in fact, we're supposed to get some rain. Oh, I'm not looking forward to that. I'd much rather have it snow, to be honest. But spring's gotta come somehow, and that brings rain. Welcome to our front porch, and there's a kitty cat right there. <laughs> Whoa, where are you going with that, Evelyn? Uh, I'm pretending the bird seat where the bird seat is at the table. Oh, okay. That's your giant cake that you made? Oh my <laughs> So what is the point of forest homeschool? You know, what exactly do you do? And to be honest, that's up to you. Homeschool is one of these wonderful things that is very fluid and very dynamic, and so it's really up to you as the educator. But the goal truly is just to inspire your kids to love nature, to get out in nature, to do some natural learning, to do some passive learning just through exploration and experimentation with the natural environment. Your children are learning how to assess risks and take risks and probably properly manage their risk taking. A child who has never climbed a tree doesn't know if it's risky or not. And so they learn just through natu the natural environment, through trial and error, what they can do, what they can't do. It helps them learn their body and how it can move in the environment and how mud takes much more effort to walk through than say on gravel. It's just a wonderful learning environment where they can learn uh, about themselves as well. I've also spoken about this before, how the environment really teaches self-management. So my younger children, you know, they like to take their mittens off, they like to take their hat off, maybe they are hot, and when they get cold, they'll know to put them back on. So that's just teaching them self-management, self-awareness, just through being in a natural environment. If you're cold or not. Your body does tell you if you're cold or not. The... No, it's hot in two. Okay, can mommy speak now? The natural environment also encourages curiosity and exploration and imagination. So I have noticed that my daughter, who isn't an extremely imaginative child, she's often saying, I'm bored, what should I do? Now that we've been out in the forest for almost six months, because we began this back in September, she is just thriving. She comes outside and she's like, oh, I'm gonna do this. And she never says she's bored anymore, which is phenomenal. So I am so excited about that. I also wanted to share a wonderful quote from this book, The Outdoor Classroom by Karen Constable. So it's a quote from Karen herself at the beginning of the book, just talking about why and what was her motivation for writing this book and for becoming a forest school leader herself. And of course, I'll link this book below. 
There is clear alarm among educationalists worldwide that children are losing touch with the natural environment and that they do not know about the impact humans are having on the area we live in. These children are the same people who in 30 years time will be expected to solve the problems associated with global warming, an increasing population, a housing shortage, and a diminishing supply of natural energy. If we are to create a population with an infinity with their own world, then we have to steer them in the right direction. Allowing children to become at one with their own natural space is crucial if we are to retain the countryside in a form that we will recognize. And I just absolutely love that quote because it really is hitting on the head that our children need to be out in the environment. They need to be, they need to feel comfortable out in nature and then they'll be able to have the imagination and the expression and just all the wonderful glorious things that come from being in nature that they can carry forward into their adulthood. I know myself as a child, we have a family cottage and I would spend hours upon hours outside at the beach, in the sand, in the forest behind the cottage. I would just eat blueberries and raspberries and I just loved being out in the forest. I love feeling the moss beneath my feet and the gravel stones under my feet as well. And it was just such a wonderful, wonderful time and a wonderful memory that I wanna pass on to my children. If you want to forest homeschool or just do a forest school of your own on the weekend all you need is somewhere to go so that place you could go could be your backyard could be a local park it doesn't even have to have that many trees or a provincial park or a state park if you're in the US so anywhere that you want to go that's within reasonable distance to your house it could be walking distance it could be biking distance it could be driving distance wherever you want to go that's outside that you feel would give you that forest feel with trees and animals that's where you go. That's pretty much it. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to do a ton of research. You just gather up your kids and you head out and you just do forest homeschool. <laughs> Get outside and go to it. And honestly, nature will inspire you. Of course, you can look online and find other wonderful resources to help direct you, but just follow your children's lead. If you follow your children's lead, you'll never go wrong. Whatever they're interested in, if it's a blade of grass, you find out all you can about that blade of grass <laughs> and you just love and experience nature down to the tiny detail with them. What are you guys up to? What are you digging, Jackson? Oh my. Oh, fort yeah, a little fort happening. I'm trying to get sticks because I heard uh, things where uh, kids build forts like this and they sink. Yeah, they collapse on the kids. Yeah, so I'm grabbing sticks to support them. Yeah. Um, as long as you don't go too deep, it'll be safe. Like that, that should still be safe like that. Yeah, Jackson's hat for him. Oh, thank you. Goodness, the traffic is noisy with the road so slushy. Yeah. Also, this is a really good place to play snowball, to play a snowball fight. Because like, you can just hide in here, and they won't see you. Also, you have some good cover. Mm-hmm. Unless they're like right over there. <laughs> good job. <laughs> gonna put that on properly. She did her best. <laughs> Here's our turtle time for today.